Each day, dozens of tennis balls congregate in the Hardy Lab, littering our beautiful engineering habitat. Many hours have been wasted in the effort to manually collect these balls. Our group has been tasked with building a device capable of launching these balls into a collection bin to help Mike Miller spend less time dealing with this pesky problem. In order to properly address the serious issue, our group sat down to brainstorm. We thought up our functions, objectives, and constraints. Then we went online to see what others have done, looking up toys and university projects. After our literary search was done, we thought up four designs. The crossbow, the charpy hammer, the elastic impactor, and the spring cannon. But in the end, one design stood out among the rest, the spring cannon. This design consisted of a tube with a spring inside. We would place the ball in the open end of the tube and compress it. When we were ready to launch a ball, we would release the spring and it would rapidly decompress. To adjust the angle, we would place the arms on the side, which we could easily readjust. Using mechanical and kinematic analysis, we found the required spring force and angles necessary to successfully drain our shots. Now it was time to build. Using the tools available at the Hardy Lab, we got to work on the construction of our final design. We used the epilogue laser cutter and cut a variety of components to fit in our final design. The first design for the ball plate suffered a fracture. An additional problem was that it was hard on the hands to arm. On our next attempt, we made a bigger L cut to fit an aluminum rod in and a sandwich block to hold it in place. In order to reduce the activation force, a dowel was added for safety. Angling the L cuts was considered but it was too unreliable and deemed unsafe. The addition of the dowel allowed our group to meet the three Newton force constraint, which was one of the largest hurdles to our design. Our final design required a whopping 80 pounds of force to compress the spring and load the device, resulting in a high rate of material failure from repeated use. This proved to be the greatest problem in our design. In the end, we believe our final design had the potential to effectively solve the problem. However, due to stability and material failures, our design fell short of our expectations. That being said, the experience and knowledge we gained in designing this product is of great value and will stick with us throughout our careers.